Hi, my name is Dr. Sridhar Panat. I am a PhD from MIT and a graduate from IIT Madras. I am also one of the three co-founders of Vijwara AI Labs. Today, I am incredibly excited to announce the release of our Computer Vision Research Bootcamp. So the purpose of me recording this video is to make you aware of the existence of this bootcamp. But more importantly, I want to communicate with you what is the structure and philosophy of this program and how you can benefit from it. Before going into the details of the program, let me actually show you one part of this paper. This paper is called Deep Seek OCR, OCR for Optical Character Recognition. You might be wondering why am I showing you this paper suddenly? Just look at this sentence. We present Deep Seek OCR an initial as an initial investigation into the feasibility of compressing long contexts via optical 2D mapping. Speci uh, and I'm skipping some sentences. Specifically, Deep Encoder serves as the core engine designed to maintain low activations under high resolution. Let's skip all that. Experiments show that when the number of uh, text tokens is within 10 times that of vision token, that is a compression ratio of less than 10x, the model can achieve decoding uh, OCR precision of 97 percentage. Just, I'm just highlighting this sentence for you. So what they have shown is, let's say you have a text, digital text document. You usually tokenize the text document, uh, the textual data and uh, those tokens, those uh, tokens which were created using the uh, text are now used for processing the document, right? You can achieve 95 percentage of optical character, 97 percentage uh, precision optical character recognition if you simply convert this into uh, an image. So let's say you are scanning a printed document, like right? converting an image, uh, a textual data into an image. And from that image, you can use tokens in the form of vision, not in the form of text and still achieve 97 percentage accuracy in reading what is there in the input text in the form of image. So what they essentially showed was vision as a modality has something deep inside it, which can capture information at a much higher efficiency, efficiency than what text can. Now, I know that it's a bit far fetched to, to say that vision is a superior modality because I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if in all the cases that applies. But this paper showed for one of the first times that such high levels of compression can be achieved if you convert textual data into into vision format. Vision format as in instead of converting, instead of using digital text, you simply use a uh, you know image of the same text. Now, when I read this paper of when it was released, it, this was a very recent paper, by the way. Their GitHub repo has twenty one k stars. It's it's blowing up in popularity. I read the paper end to end and when I read it for the first time, I was truly mind blown. Like I would not have expected this. That's the reason why I was mind blown. Like if somebody told me that you can feed instead of feeding the text and, and converting that text into tokens, you can simply feed the image of a text and then you can create vision tokens from it. And those tokens actually carry information equivalent to that of 10 text tokens. If somebody said something like this to me, I would I would not have or would have had a very difficult time believing it. But this paper showed that there is something so special about vision as a modality. Now, we know this. I don't have to show the deep seek OCR paper to make you believe it. I mean, there are even sayings uh, that uh, 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 an image is worth a thousand words, something like that, right? So, of course, vision as a modality is so important. But if you think about the years 2012 to 2019 or 2020, convolutional neural networks, CNNs were dominating vision. Most of the problems like uh, classification, object detection, segmentation, and, and any other broader level computer vision tasks, in most of those CNNs dominated. When Vision Transformer was introduced by Google in 2020, if I remember correctly, it showed for the first time that you can surpass the you know, performance of CNN using transformers. So the training required for vision transformer for, was extensive because the data requirement was, it was very data hungry model, but then many, many other models came along the way, like data efficient transformers or SWIN transformers, which were much better than the vanilla vision transformer in various aspects. Then there were many other applications uh, like vision language models where you want to align the 
language modality and vision modality. If you look at the text of an apple, if you look at the image of an apple, can you represent both these using a vector in the same space where the vector corresponding to apple text as, as well as vector corresponding to, to the image of an apple, they both should have high level of cosine similarity. Can you construct something like this? Vision language models to a great extent address that problem. And now we have vision language planning and vision language action applicable to robotics, path planning, uh, self-driving cars, etc. So there is a huge set of applications coming under the broad umbrella of computer vision. And that is the relevance of computer vision as a broad domain. And the specific models like CNNs, vision transformers, VLMs, etc. Uh, if you look at it from an architecture perspective. So my purpose of releasing this bootcamp is for you to have a platform to work on computer vision research, irrespective of whether you are interested in CNN or transformers for vision. So you could be working on any type of problem statement. It could be about object detection. It could be segmentation, or it could be simply understanding uh, images to extract features from it and do something else with it, not necessarily classification or not necessarily object detection. But whatever it is, vision as a modality, there are various ways in which you can extract features from it. There are various ways in which you can, you know, combine it with text modality as in multimodal LLMs. So this bootcamp is for those of you who wish to be part of cutting edge research in, in areas which are spanning vision broadly uh, and uh, multimodal LLMs, if you were to talk specifically about uh, transformers. So I'll give you a brief outline of this uh, bootcamp first. I have added a FAQ section at the end of this page. So you can, of course, read it. But I thought you will benefit tremendously from this uh, by knowing the structure of the program. So this is a four month bootcamp. You will be working with us for a duration of total four months in which the first six to seven weeks will be dedicated for building the foundations. If you have already gone through some of our computer vision related material, uh, the hands on computer vision or transformers for vision, maybe you might also be, it, it might be possible for you to even skip the first six to seven weeks and directly jump into research. But otherwise, the first six to seven weeks in foundation building and remaining time on research problem statement. Usually, the research problem statement is decided somewhat in the first week itself, not the specific problem statement, but the broader level. Okay, what is the the general area of your research that we will be deciding in the first week itself. If you don't know what you want to work on, don't worry. We can figure it out. We can help you with that. Then with respect to the structure of the program, there are a few things. The communication happens through uh, three platforms. One is email, second is loom.com, and third is uh, Overleaf. I hope this font is readable for you. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So Loom is an asynchronous meeting software, which we frequently use for communicating longer messages, email for quick communication. And there are also embedded assignments on the website, and you will be working through that assignments also. Once we are in the paper writing stage, we will move our communication to Overleaf. And for doubt clearance also, we will use our email uh, primarily and Loom. Then the phase one which is the time period where you will be going through the foundational material will be a fully self-paced uh, part of the program. So you will be going through the material at your own pace, but within the stipulated window. And what this means is the reason why we kept it this way is because people from different time zones can join our program. The topics are very broad, but um, coming under the umbrella of vision. So CNNs, anything related to vision transformers, vision language models or uh, VLP, VLA from robotics or self-driving cars. It could be related to detection transformer or time as former. It can be transformers for videos also because at the end of the day, video is also a vision uh, modality. So it can be based on any of these models, but the specific topic we can finalize as we get through the program. In the past, we have had great success. So these are some of the papers which we got through in our uh, <clears throat> as part of our various research boot camps to new ribs workshops emnlp workshops uh, two papers last year got into iccb workshop when i say last year i mean 2025 uh, one of our papers from acm cikm recently won the best paper award at uh, at a workshop at icm 
We have sent students to MIT, URPC. So overall, we have had incredible success working on various domains in the research. If you are interested in looking at our various research uh, outcomes as part of all the things that we have been doing, you, have, you can just look at this website, research.vijwara.ai. Here, if you go to publication section, it's mostly updated. Maybe some papers are missing from this section, but basically you can read most of our latest papers from here. So this is uh, what we have been doing in research. So we we have a three prong philosophies, foundations, uh, practicals and research. So foundations, meaning you will be building strong foundations and then you'll be doing something hands on and then tangible outcome in the form of uh, a research paper or conference publication. And in my experience, this is the best way in which you can get your foot into any field, even as a complete beginner. Now, there are a few more questions. So these are our mentors, myself, Dr. Sridhar Panat, then Dr. Raj Dandekar and Dr. Rajat Dandekar, who are our co-founders. They are also graduates from MIT, Purdue and IIT Madras. So uh, we will be working with you to figure out what would be the best problem statement that you can work on to create maximum impact for your profile. And the time commitment that we expect is roughly 8 to 10 hours or even 12 hours per week. It's not like every single week you have to maintain this. Ideally, that is what is we are expecting. But we totally understand that some weeks you may have some uh, personal things to take care of. Maybe you are busy. Maybe you have some other external deadlines. So all of those things are taken into account. And uh, the enrollment works through the website. Uh, so this is the website. I will share the link with you. cvresearchbootcamp.vishwara.ai and you can enroll by clicking on this link, enroll now. The price is rupees 95K and it's a one-time payment. We won't be having EMI or discount option. The pricing is what shows on the website. And I think I have answered most of the questions. I just want to briefly go through the um, structure of the phase two. So phase one is building strong foundations. And here, depending on what is the area in which you want to work on, I will suggest you certain topics. I won't be asking you to go through every single topic because we can make the phase one very streamlined. So if you are primarily interested in working on problem statements related to vision transformers, I will ask you to go through certain set of material. If it is more related to CNNs, we will ask you to go through certain material primarily about CNNs. But once the phase one is done, when you move to phase two, uh, the structure will have a lot of common things. So first you will be working on your initial set of experiments, sort of like POC, proof of concept experiments, which is to show that whatever hypothesis we form, during our initial topic selection stage, that hypothesis can be either we can nullify it by disproving our hypothesis or we can prove the hypothesis, right? And this will be very important because these initial quick and dirty experiments will, will help us understand how we should take our, our process forward. We'll try to identify what are the gaps in literature and we'll try to see what problem statement will, uh, will really add value. So on one hand, we want to work on novel problem statements. On the other hand, it need not be like a, something that takes you three years to finish. So what we look at is we look at problem statements that have sufficient novelty, but at the same time are sort of like low hanging fruit problem statements, problem statements that you can work on in a, you know, in a several month kind of span of time. And then as you work on the problem statement, the story, your story of your paper will slowly emerge results will slowly start to come and then we will slowly start writing the paper one by one. Of course, when we initially write the paper, there will be a lot of logical gaps. The, there will be a lot of loopholes in what you are saying. Maybe the hypothesis has significant mistakes in some assumptions. All those things we will figure out as we go along the way. And finally, once the paper is getting into its final shape, we will figure out what are the best conferences, workshops or journals that suits that particular paper. And we will submit to those. Not all conference submissions are successful. I must say that, of course, rejection is a high possibility, which is why we will try uh, in different venues if, if something does not work out. So it's not like we should we should target one conference and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It should not it should not be like we should be heartbroken when something doesn't work out. It's part and parcel of the scientific research process. We form a hypothesis. We may even end up disproving it like we have had such experiences in the recent past where we thought something will work but it totally ended up not working and then we thought of communicating that through our article so 
the the story of your work will evolve based on the actual results that you get right sometimes the results will be in favor of your hypothesis sometimes it will be opposite to what you are or what you are uh, hypothesizing but in any case uh, if you do a systematic research if you follow our process uh, you can expect a very good tangible outcome at the end of it so this is the structure of the program and there are a wide variety of topics if you have any questions, you can email us at hello at vijwara.com. Uh, we have we don't have uh, intake every single time. It's not a you know a continuous intake program because we only work with a handful of students at any given point of time. So the intake happens once or twice every month because we have students in our past programs who are graduating, and those students uh, once they graduate, we'll have some openings, and based on that, we will take new students. So if you want to know, let um, want to ask us the availability you can simply drop us an email i'll be happy to respond to it so thank you so much and if you have any questions don't be uh, you know feel free to uh, reach out to us thank you so much and uh, i hope you will become part of this program and i hope you will benefit from it tremendously